Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so I hope that you're all having a wonderful Sunday thus far. And in this video, we will be talking about Hurricane Roslyn, which is over in the Eastern Pacific about to make landfall in Mexico, as well as the possibility for us to see development in the Atlantic Basin and to be specific, the Caribbean. So at first, it was just the GFS model showing something, but now other models are picking up on that possibility as they're going to be heading into the next several days and so before i go into details please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update on the tropics and to show support for the channel you can leave a like on this video all right, and so let's go ahead and kickstart things with Hurricane Roslyn. And so here we have the major hurricane. It is a Category 3 hurricane right now, closing in on Mexico. It's slightly weakened, but it is still a very dangerous and destructive hurricane. And we see that uh, it is likely that those tropical storm force winds are already affecting some areas along with that uh, heavy rainfall and storm surge. And so let's go on to the cone forecast here. And we're seeing that we still have all these areas under watches and warnings. And so uh, West Central Mexico is definitely going to be feeling the worst of Roslyn as it is going to be making its way inland. So uh, current winds are 125 miles per hour and it is moving to the north northeast at 16 miles per hour. And so fortunately, once it makes landfall, it is going to just rapidly weaken. However, that rainfall threat is going to still linger around for areas in the path of what's left of Roslyn because, I mean, uh, it is going to be drifting there and bringing along with it all that moisture all that shower activity and uh, spreading that inland and so uh, flash flooding is a possibility for flood prone areas guys but uh, right now as the storm is making its way inland it is uh, likely enhancing that storm surge which is uh, the inundation of the coast due to the winds of the cyclone pushing the water on shore so uh, that is likely happening and uh, there are likely strong winds already across some areas so we already see that yellow highlighted region that is the extent of the tropical storm force winds and we're seeing that uh, they are certainly already affecting areas in the hurricane warning area and so guys uh, this hurricane is a very destructive one as I said it is closing in on west central Mexico it is going to be bringing all of those very dangerous conditions and so hopefully everyone there has heeded the warnings as the storm makes its way in and so guys now let's go ahead and talk about what is happening across the Atlantic and so looking back at this infrared satellite view we see that there is some activity here and there we have that boundary of course uh, that frontal boundary that extends into the Caribbean we see some shower and thunderstorm activity out in the open Atlantic and there is invest 94 L noted right within that region and we also see some activity out in the main development region but we want to talk about the possibility for us to see uh, development as we're going to be progressing into the next couple of days but first First, let's talk about the Caribbean briefly. So we're looking at a closer view of the region here and we're seeing that uh, some of that activity from that front is affecting sections of the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, Cuba, uh, sections of Haiti as well and even Jamaica and even extended as far down south as into portions of Honduras and so uh, as time goes by the system is going to be dissipating and uh, we're seeing that for the rest of the region though mainly the eastern section we're not really having much going on maybe just some passing clouds maybe having a stray shower or two but for the most part a majority of the eastern Caribbean especially the uh, lesser Antilles should be experiencing sunny skies today and uh, there is a tropical wave that is entering the region and another that is already in the region but we're not really seeing a whole lot going on for that and so now let's go ahead and take a look at what the models are expecting and we're going to be starting out with GFS and uh, we're taking a look at the 31st of the month so next monday so as we're going to be heading into the end of this month the gfs is forecasting that uh, there is going to be some moisture across sections of the southeastern caribbean and the tropical wave is going to be moving in and when we have that already moist environment and a tropical wave moving in under the presence of favorable conditions such as those uh, favorable upper level winds as well as warm sea surface temperatures of course then we can definitely see some development take place and that is what the uh, the GFS is expecting to happen as we progress into the end of this month and into early November and so as we head to uh, 
Thursday of next week, we're seeing here where GFS is expecting intensification of the system as it accelerates towards the west. Here we're seeing a pressure of 996 millibars and the lower the pressure is, the stronger the winds. And all these teals here, that is indicating the moisture if you're not aware of that. And then the brown indicates dry, stable conditions. So that's not typically where you would see a tropical cyclone trying to develop in. And so as we head to Saturday, the 5th of November, next Saturday, we're seeing here that uh, the GFS is expecting that we're going to be having the system uh, making that turn towards the east, starting to move on an eastward track and eventually making its way back out into the Atlantic. So this here is quite interesting to see happen, but I mean, it, it, it isn't impossible. We definitely need a conducive environment, but it is not impossible for this to happen. And what's making it a little bit more of a possibility, but not a guarantee, is the fact that other models are hopping onto this happening. And so, uh, so this is the CMC, and this is going to uh, Tuesday, the 1st of November. We start to see that system develop, and the model is showing that it is going to be making its way, uh, possibly uh, taking targets at Jamaica. But I would take this with a grain of salt at this point in time because the system is just uh, this would be too far out and uh, usually accuracy is very low on a system that is possible so far out so we're talking about a week plus from now and uh, there are likely to be many changes and the system isn't even guaranteed to develop so uh, we definitely have to wait and see but nonetheless have to keep our eyes on the tropics and in terms of the euro let's take a look at the ensemble tracks right here and so headed to uh, Friday of this week going to Saturday we're not really seeing much but headed to Sunday going to Monday that is when we start to see some of these members showing uh, a possible system in the region so uh, there are not a whole lot of them hopping onto this but we should also remember that the GFS goes further out than most or all of the other models and so as time goes by uh, we're, we're gonna see what eventually happens with this as I said but we still have to keep our eyes out there because those tropical waves are still out there coming in and uh, the hurricane season is not over yet and I think that there is a uh, there is that chance that we could see maybe one to three more storms before the official end of the hurricane season. And so in terms of current conditions, we are seeing here that uh, in terms of the sea surface temperatures, uh, things are quite warm across the Caribbean. So that is definitely not an issue for something trying to develop there. But of course, other atmospheric conditions have to be conducive as well. And then we're seeing that cool down in the Gulf of Mexico off the east coast and southeast coast of the U.S. and overall the Atlantic. Atlantic Basin, uh, the North Atlantic Basin is cooling down because we are approaching the uh, the season of winter, of course, but the northern hemisphere of the Earth is tilting away from the sun. And so that is going to be resulting in much cooler temperatures, which is what we're seeing happening right now. And then in terms of the wind shear, uh, we have unfavorable wind shear dominating and that is indicated by the reds the green means favorable and the yellow means neutral so uh, in order for us to see development we have to have some of that favorable wind shear extended across sections of the southeastern caribbean in the region where we would have that wave making its way in and so guys uh, as i said what we're seeing now isn't guaranteed to take place but but yes we're having more models picking up on that system possibly developing and uh, we shouldn't take this too lightly at the point in time but this is no guarantee that we will in fact see development before the end of the hurricane season in the southeastern caribbean and so guys that is really it for now and if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be weatherwise